Our brains automatically scan our environment every few seconds to make sure we're safe. No, really. Thank you, brain, for doing the safety dance. It's true that at times some of us might not feel safe or even be truly physically safe for a variety of reasons. Our environment, our vulnerabilities, differing abilities, or unmet needs, or how we are treated. Physically safe or not, that's not actually what matters most. Our brains just need to feel safe, which for children who've experienced trauma is no easy feat. For these kids, and maybe even you, difficult past experiences can make trying to feel safe like a Herculean high wire circus stunt. Dr. Stephen Porges, founder of the polyvagal theory, explains how even when there is no obvious threat, our nervous systems may not be convinced, especially for kids with backgrounds of trauma. In fact, for these kids, their brains don't even register the word safety. Their brains are so busy yelling danger, they're perpetually overwhelmed with what Brave Brains author Jessica Sonarski calls safety blindness. So what does this feel like for us adults? Totally discombobulating. Because we're parenting kids who can't, can't sit still, can't calm down, can't be nice, can't control their body, can't listen, can't learn, can't sleep, and can't help it. However, it turns out if we adults unflaggingly, unswervingly offer standard safety valves and construct clear predictable road signs to guide the way, science shows kids can start to feel safe. With these five safety valves, you can release pressure, reassure kids, and build their brains. Number one, give choices. Giving choices, especially around transitional times, helps kids of all ages develop their voice and encourages their thinking brain to grow. Number two, offer food and drink. Offering frequent nutrition takes the cake. Science not only shows their bodies and brains need it, but even the act of just offering nourishment to kids helps them feel safer. Number three, pocket pal or fidget friend. Help children find or even make a small treasure or token they can keep in their pocket to hold or touch for comfort if they need it. Number four, safe spot. Kids need a soothing place where they can go to feel safer, even just in their imagination if they can't physically leave. Number five, time in. For these kids, practice time ins, not time outs. Brains remain in a state of fear when they feel profoundly alone, as in, no one can keep me safe. Staying connected, especially around times of conflict, is paramount. If a child must be apart from a trusted adult for time to themselves, make sure they have access to rhythmic activities like a swing, rocker, music, a sport, plus cuddly comforts to help their brains soothe and settle. Besides setting kids up with consistent safety valves, even more important for you as the caregiver are the road signs of safety. These safety signs or safety cues will sound awful simple, but they frame how kid brains and all of our brains 
can register safe. Number one, smile. So simple, right? A genuine smile triggers brains to feel sublime. Better yet, a real smile shows a child that at least one adult thinks they're the cat's meow. Number two, eyes. A warm, welcoming, friendly gaze says it all. Because of our pupils' automatic reactions, our eyes really are windows to the soul. Number three, voice. A kind, soothing tone, using sweet terms of endearment and affection. Singing, or better yet, singing together, creates the safe connection that our bodies and brains crave. Number four, play. Playfulness shouts a big hooray to the brain and signals that this person must be safe. Number five, touch. When it comes down to the wire, touch is the top contender of all the safety cues. Nothing nails home a sense of safety like positive physical touch. Now let's reflect on what we've covered. These five road signs, balanced with the five safety valves, positively pave the way for brains to feel safe. Once brains feel safe, and only when they feel safe, then we can enter the A-OK -okay zone where the really good stuff happens for everyone. Now, no one knows better than you how to keep your kids' brains feeling safe. But safety dancing while keeping your kids on track is life in the ultra-fast lane. Be sure to put on the brakes now and then, even for just a beat, to take care of your own brain so that you can feel safe too. For more resources on felt safety, hustle on over to Robin Peters Bennett, Robin Goebel, Dr. Jaya John, Stephen Porges, Richard Rose, Jessica Sinarski, and TBRI.